Hello, I'm Caitlin Tuza. I'm a pain psychologist at the University of Washington. This is part two following a presentation about pain psychology concepts applied to pain neuroscience. As noted previously, the processing of pain signals involves brain regions associated with attention processes, interpretation of stimuli, behavior change, and learning. With pain, we're thinking about a threat appraisal process, essentially asking the questions of what is it, is it dangerous, and do I have the necessary skills, knowledge, and resources to manage this threat? The answers to these questions and resulting behavior may result in further or closer monitoring of the stimulus or reduced attention to it, or perhaps increased awareness of pain or reduced awareness of pain. In pain psychology, we consider factors that might influence this learning and attention process and build insight through exploring the connection between pain perception, emotions, cognitions, and behavior. With pain neuroscience education, we aim to help people with persistent pain to reconceptualize pain by addressing unhelpful and inaccurate beliefs about pain, building awareness of factors that affect pain, and challenging the threat that persistent pain poses essentially affecting the threat appraisal process. Better understanding of pain neuroscience is associated with changes in fear avoidance, catastrophizing, and pain intensity. Cognitive stress coping strategies address the role of internal behaviors, such as cognitions and mood factors, in distress associated with pain and the functional impact of pain. Cognitive stress coping strategies may be used to challenge catastrophizing, bring awareness to factors that influence pain perception, process emotions, and address pain self-efficacy. Challenging unhelpful beliefs about threat, loss, and harm related to pain is associated with higher levels of active coping, better functional outcomes, and reduced pain intensity. Behavioral strategies like activity pacing are used to increase activity tolerance and desensitize to activities, movement, and sensory elements. Pacing is an active self-management strategy that aims to address the underactivity, overactivity cycle in persistent pain, make pain and activity more predictable, and address fear avoidance of activity. It often has two goals, desensitization through conditioning and energy conservation through breaking up activity with rest and alternative activities. Pacing can be used as a tool to increase engagement in meaningful and important activities while also addressing behaviors that contribute to symptom flares. It's a multifaceted strategy that incorporates goal setting, graduated exercise, consistent activity levels over time, acceptance and mindfulness, and cognitive coping strategies. Persistent pain directly and indirectly interferes with goal pursuit, which is associated with negative impacts on overall well-being, self-worth, and sense of purpose, and this can be a major source of pain-related distress. People with persistent pain may have reduced cognitive and physical energy resources required for goal-directed activity and may have competing goals for available energy resources. Goal adjustment and flexibility in goal pursuit is an important part of adapting to and managing persistent pain, and certainly for addressing frustration, rumination, and hopelessness associated with repeated failure in goal pursuit. As patients are having more successful experiences in goal achievement, pain-related self-efficacy and motivation may also improve. Mindfulness is a multifaceted construct its practice requires attention to the present moment and holding this attention or awareness with attitudes of non-judgment and acceptance. It can be a powerful tool in building insight into thought processes, the connection be between physical and cognitive effective processes, and development of self-soothing skills. Mindfulness plays a role in most active pain coping strategies such as desensitization and pacing approaches. It can be used to address distress and sympathetic arousal associated with pain and can be a powerful self-soothing skill when in the moment distress is difficult. It's also very helpful in addressing pain-related sleep disturbance. So again, 
Zooming out, we're looking at cognitive and behavioral strategies and skills that address the threat appraisal process, attention and learning processes, and behavior change over time. As changes occur in behaviors such as catastrophizing, fear avoidance, and distress associated with pain, just to name a few, changes in function and structure of brain regions involved in brain processing are also observed.